So we're going to have a look at the difference between our submarine animation that we had a look at in Keynote, which is a little bit more flat and 2D, and then bringing that into Reality Composer and making it more of a 3D experience for students. Wow, look at all the sea creatures in the sunlight level of the ocean. There's dolphins and turtles and seals. There's a whole group of fish that just swam past. There's a weird purple octopus. I think that's a manta ray. Uh-oh, is that a hammerhead shunk? I think we're going under 200 metres now. We're moving into the twilight level now. There's some really strange things down here. I'm not sure what they all are. I think that was a cuttlefish and that's definitely a jellyfish. Some weird green things just zoomed past us and there's some fish with weird lights attached to their heads. Wow, my friends and I are in this cool yellow submarine diving under the ocean to find out all the amazing creatures that live here. Look, there's a dolphin and some turtles. Look at that weird octopus. Oh my god, a school of fish just quickly swam past. We're in the sunlight level and it's about 200 metres down before we change over to the twilight level. I think that's a hammerhead shark coming. Now we're starting to get to the twilight level. The sunlight is starting to disappear and it's getting a bit darker down here. So this is just going to be a brief look at Reality Composer, not really at how to create the scene, but how it's been put together or some of the behaviours that have been used. And I'll show it from a few different angles because there's a bit of water on the top and you can't always see it depending on the angle that you're at. So what we were trying to do with this Reality Composer scene is take it from Keynote where it's a bit flat and 2D and put it into Reality Composer where it starts to be a bit more 3D. It gives the students more of the depth of that ocean from the sunlight to the twilight to the midnight level and they can start to see the different sizes of the sea creatures and when you start to add behaviors onto them if you get the students to add the behaviors they can think about how fast or slow or the different pathways that the sea creatures would behave so in this one we get the whale to jump out of the ocean do a twist and fall back down and one of the dolphins on the left hand side, he also zooms up out of the water and dives back in again. So let's put this into play mode and have a look at it. Wow, my friends and I are in this cool yellow submarine diving under the ocean to find out all the amazing creatures that live here. Look, there's a dolphin and some turtles. Look at that weird octopus. Oh my God, a school of fish just quickly swam past. We're in the sunlight level and it's about 200 metres down before we change over to the twilight level. I think that's a hammerhead shark coming. Now we're starting to get to the twilight level. The sunlight is starting to disappear and it's getting a bit darker down here. All right, so what we have on this scene is a bit of a ruler and then just some boxes that we've made the different ocean levels with. I've got a little sub up here, which I've made from the shapes in this library. So some of these basic shapes here, I've put them together with some different kinds of materials and then grouped them all together, imported some emojis and put them onto the portholes as well. The submarine has a little propeller which orbits around a ball that's hidden inside of the submarine. So it looks like the propeller is actually spinning around and the propeller has been made just from a speech bubble. So one of these speech bubbles here and we changed it around with all the different properties and dynamics and made it look like a propeller. These 3D images have been downloaded from Sketchfab and imported. Most of them already have USDZ animations on there and when you put a behavior onto here, so there's lots and lots of behaviors on here, when you put a behavior onto a USDZ file you can bring back that animation and then we can add on another animation where it moves from one side to the other. So at the moment, I've only worked on about half of this. So I'll try to explain how it's been put together a little bit. So if I bring through my behaviors, I've got my ocean and then my ocean sounds and then my other sounds. So I've imported or recorded some sounds into GarageBand. So this one is a soundscape that I've created. The next sound down is me talking. Then I've got my submarine and the propeller, which move from the top down to the bottom. And then what I've got is a whole list of the different sea creatures or the ones that I've managed to put behaviors on at the moment. And I try to make sure that I name them so I remember or it's easier to find which one is what. 
So the tricky part about this is to try to get the sea creature to come on with the audio recording or at the time that it's mentioned in the audio recording. So I had to go through and do a little bit of planning and figure out when I said each bit. So what I had to do was go away and do a little bit of a timeline planning and figure out at what time did I say each creature's name. And then what I needed to do was use some hide and show movements and then add a USDZ animation and a move and rotate. So I'll see if I can find an example of this for you. The first few sea creatures just came on and swam across the screen. These are ones that I wasn't really talking about. So if we look at something like the dolphin, what I've got is a hide and then it waits a few seconds and then it will show and then it will move. Now this one doesn't have a USDZ animation on it. What I'm trying to do is give it enough time to wait and then to start moving on. So hopefully it'll get near the sub when I start talking about it. So if we have a look at one of the turtle behaviors, you can see it's got hide zero seconds. Now I put hide as zero because it will start 100% on and then it will fade out. We want it just to hide straight away when our scene starts. That's the trigger that we've got on there. Then it waits a certain amount of time and then it will show. So you can see it's waited 10 seconds, which is quite a while. And then I've got my USDZ animation linked in with my move and rotate. What is probably really important in this area is to make sure that my USDZ animation duration is the same length or the same duration as the move, rotate and scale to. So you can see that they're a little bit out there. And what I've tried to do, so if I go down to the small fish here, you can see that I've tried to keep these exactly the same, 6.2 and 6.2. So all of the animation is just going through and having a trigger of a scene start. So everything starts on one side and then we'll swim or move to the other side. So what should happen is they should hide, wait for a certain amount of time before they show. And if the 3D object has a USDZ animation, we'll apply that with a move and rotate as well. So it's a little bit of tricky timing to figure out all of the different creatures, how long we have to wait for each of them to hide and show. So Sometimes it can be a little bit of a trial and error. Just give it a go and see what happens. You can see here that the eel is up to about 23 seconds to wait. Some of these jellyfish weren't hiding in that animation. So I might have to go back and have a look at why that's happening. At the moment, this is still a bit of a work in progress, just trying to figure out how to get everything to hide and then wait and show and come on and move close to the sub as the recording is talking about that particular object. Now, when you're creating a scene like this, it can start to lag out a little bit and move around because there is a lot of data and information happening. The 3D objects I have downloaded from Sketchfab and then imported them into the scene. So sometimes if it does lag out or it jumps around or it moves around, you can either tap in the top left hand corner and choose frame scene to come back again. If you're doing this and you get lost again and you forget to tap on frame scene, you can just double tap on your screen and it will do the same thing again for you. It'll zoom out to where your little scene is happening. So you can see that we've still got quite a lot of creatures to go through and animate through the twilight level and the midnight level. There's some more interesting creatures coming down here with the giant squid and some vampire squid and some anglerfish, the ones with the little lights on their head. I think this could be a really interesting task for students to do because they're really immersed and involved in the scene. They've put themselves and their emoji or a photograph of themselves onto the sub. So they start to feel like they're part of the ocean and they can see the sea creatures, they can see how big they are and they can start to rotate through the 3D space and see these creatures as 3D objects rather than just the flat shapes that we had in Keynote. So it becomes a fully immersive experience for them. Reality Composer can be a little bit difficult to start off with. The more that you play with it, the easier it will become for you. So don't be afraid to just have a go, try out moving a box or anything from one side of the screen to the other and try to add on another shape and another shape. Try to see what all the different triggers do and see if you can put together a bit of an action sequence and see that how that happens and see how you can add or merge the different action sequences together. And you can do that by tapping, holding and dragging on top of and then it will merge the sequence together. Wow, my friends and I are in this cool yellow submarine, diving under the ocean to find out all the amazing creatures that live here. 
Look, there's a dolphin and some turtles. Look at that weird octopus. Oh my god, a school of fish just quickly swam past. We're in the sunlight level and it's about 200 meters down before we change over to the twilight level. I think that's a hammerhead shark coming. Now we're starting to get to the twilight level. The sunlight is starting to disappear and it's getting a bit darker down here. 